Welcome to Shop Saver Minutes. I'm Router Bob. I get a lot of questions about rack and pinion versus ball screw, and I wanted to take a little bit of time to unpack that. We use both technologies here at Shop Saver CNC, so we're well versed in it. Let's start with rack and pinion first. A rack and pinion system basically is a straight, it's called a rack, it has teeth on it, okay? Then you have a pinion, in, which is really a little gear, looks like a cog, and that moves back and forth and meshes with those, and as that pinion turns, the, the machine moves. All right, now there's two variations of that. There's actually a straight rack and there is a helical rack. And you could probably argue the helical might be a little bit better because the way the teeth mesh, it's a little quieter. Uh, they both have the same inherent problem and that problem is that they have backlash. Backlash is another word for play. In a typical traveling gantry CNC router for wood, you're gonna have to have between three and five thousandths of play on each side in order for everything to move smoothly. If you, if you tighten up more than that, sometimes one side of the gantry will get in a bind, so that doesn't work. And, and of course, what, where that affects you, it, in a lot of applications in wood, it doesn't. But when you get into precise stuff, if you're doing phenolics and you're doing all kinds of hard plastics, or if you're doing in wood, if you're doing MDF doors, you'll find that that, that play shows up and you can see it. If you're cutting small letters, the play shows up. Okay, let's talk about ball screws to start with. Now, what you have in a ball screw system is you have the precision screw itself, and then you have a ball nut that rotates along it. And that rotation along the, the ball screw is really where the motion comes from. Now, in between those two, there are actually some small bearings that run in these little tracks that recirculate. And the bearings are slightly bigger than the tracks, and so that takes the play out. That's called preload, and that's really why ball screw systems are, are more accurate. Now, once you use a ball screw system, there's actually two ways you can use it. On a longer axis, I can actually rotate the ball nut, and that causes it to move along a stationary uh, precision screw. The other thing I can do is basically mount the ball nut and actually turn the screw. We typically do that in the Z-axis because the length of the Z-axis ball screws is shorter. At Shop Saber CNC, we use both precision ball screws and rack and pinions. If the machine's going to be a machine tool grade CNC, it's always going to have ball screws because they're more accurate. There are a couple instances where rack and pinions make sense if you're making a plasma machine. All right? the, the actual the variations on the, uh, the, the arc on the plasma are, are probably more than the backlash in the, in the rack and pinions, so that makes sense to use that. The other application where we, where we use it are for some entry-level machines where we're trying to keep the cost down so the customer can, can afford to get into CNC. And we use rack and pinion there because it costs less than a ball screw. Actually, when you combine the rack and pinion and you combine our floating drive system, you know, it's a pretty accurate machine and the performance is very, very good. Well, I hope this discussion of ball screw and rack and pinion helps you understand this a little more. Thank you for watching this and I hope you enjoyed this Shop Saver Minute.